Hi, in this video we will give a short introduction to hardware in the loop uh, simulation and testing. So what is uh, hardware in the loop simulation and testing? Hardware in the loop uh, simulation is a technique that is used for testing control system, embedded systems, etc. and carrying out the hardware in the loop simulation to test the control system, embedded system, etc. is called hardware in the loop simulation. You find more information about it in these references. So hardware in the loop simulation and testing, and the machine or the physical part of the system, which we can call the plant, is normally connected with a control system through actuators and sensors. With hardware in the loop testing and simulation, the plant is actually replaced by a simulation of the plant, uh, which is called the hardware in the loop simulator. So we use a mathematical model of the plant in the hardware in the loop simulation and testing. So if the hardware in the loop simulator is designed well, uh, it will accurately uh, mimic the plant, and then we can use it to test the control system. So why do you use or need Harvin loop simulation and testing? Um, in general, Harvin loop simulation is a technique that can be used to develop and test complex process systems. Uh, the Harvin loop simulation includes uh, a mathematical model of the process uh, and the hardware uh, the device or what you call the electronic control unit you want to test. Yeah, this could be, a, for instance, a PID controller, an embedded PID controller, which we will use in this video. So the hardware device is normally an embedded system. So the main purpose with hardware in loop simulation and testing is to test the hardware device on a simulator before we implement it on the real process. It's also very useful to, for training purposes. Um, the process operator may learn how to use the system and may operate it by using the hardware in the loop simulation. Another benefit of hardware in the loop is that testing can be done without damaging equipment or the hardware or or also lives can be saved using hardware in the loop simulation and testing. So here we see an example. Here we have a model of the plant and here we have the electronic control unit, the ECU, and here we have our hardware in the loop system. So hardware in the loop is a form of real-time simulation. Uh, hardware in the loop differs differ from uh, real-time simulation by the addition of real components in the loop. So you use the real component to control a mathematical model of the plant or the process. So what is an uh, ECU, electronic control unit? In automotive electronics, electronic control unit is a generic term for any embedded system that controls one or more of electro electrical systems or subsystems in a motor vehicle. An ECU could also be an embedded PID controller, etc., which we will use in our example. For more information about ECU, uh, go to this reference. Here we see some examples of uh, typical industrial control systems. Uh, we could have a distributed control system, a so-called DCS system, or we could have a PLC, a programmable logical controller, or we could use a programmable automation controller, so-called PAC, or we could have a PC control system, or a so-called SCALA system, supervisory control and data acquisition, or we could have an industrial PID controller, which we will use in our hardware in loop simulation and testing. So here we see an example of a typical use of an industrial PID controller. So we connect 
the PID controller to, uh, to the plant or the process. In this case, is, this is a small scale process, a so-called air heater, which we will use as an example in this video. So we control um, this process using this industrial PID controller. So then the purpose in the hardware in the loop simulation and testing is to replace this process with a mathematical model and then test the PID controller using a mathematical model instead of the real process. So then uh, the PID controller works fine with the mathematical model, we can connect it to the real system. Here in this example we see a typical PC based control system. Here we have the control system on our PC. So here we have PID control and monitoring of the process. And then we connect the control system to the process or the plant. In this case, uh, a small scale process called the air heater. So we co connect the process to, to the control system using an uh, input output module. In this case, a USB 6008 from National Instruments. This device has analog inputs and analog output outputs. So we connect the process value to analog input and the value is sent to the computer. And then and the PID algorithm sends the control signal back to an analog output to the process like this. And then of course we want to typically test the control system using a mathematical model before we use the real system. So here we see the typical main difference between a traditional process control system using software for implementing the control system just to, as in the example on the previous slide. So here um, we have the software uh, which is a computer or another electronic control unit. It could be a embedded PID controller with the software which we use to control the hardware which is the actual process. And in order to send data between the process and the software we need to use an input output module or a DAC device like this with input channels and output channels. With hardware in loop simulation and testing, you turn everything upside down. So the hardware, the electronic control unit, or, or the PID controller in this case, is the hardware controlling the process, which is a mathematical model implemented in software, like this. So now we will go through a practical example where we use hardware in the loop simulation and testing. In this example we need the following software. We need LabVIEW and the LabVIEW control and simulation module. And we need the DAC MX driver which we use uh, to control and get values from the DAC device within LabVIEW. Uh, next we need some hardware in this example. So we need a process. In this case, we use a small scale process called an air heater. Um, the process uh, blow air through this tube and you can control the speed of the fan and the heating of the air in the tube. So we measure the temperature here on the outside. So we want to use a future PXG5 PID controller to control the air heater process and then we start, start to make a mathematical model of the air heater so we can control a mathematical model of the air heater using the future PID controller before we test the future PID controller on the real process. In this example we will use this small scale process but you can use any kind of process, a small water tank or whatever. 
and also we use a future PXG file PID control in this example, but you can use any kind of uh, embedded PID controller. So typically a simulator communicates with the electronic control unit, in this case the PID controller uh, using ordinary input-output. Um, such, such a system where the real controller is controlling a simulated process is called hardware in the loop uh, simulation and testing. So the main purpose with this example is to test the hardware device on a simulator before we implement it on the real process. So if the mathematical model uh, we create and use uh, and use it, in, use it in the simulator is an accurate representation of the real process, we may even tune the PID controller using the simulator. Then finally we can test and use the PID controller on the model and if everything is okay we can implement the controller on the, uh, and connect it to the real process or the real system. So here we see an illustration of how we will do it. We have here a mathematical model of the air heater the process implemented in LabVIEW in this case. And we connect the mathematical model through the hardware in the loop uh, device, which is the PID controller, the ECU, through the duct device like this. So we connect uh, the output of the mathematical model to the PID controller and the, based on that the PID controller and the PID algorithm uh, uh, find a, a proper um, uh, control value which is sent back to the control the mathematical model. So here we see an overview of the system. So we have the simulated process implemented in LabVIEW in this case or it could be in any kind of programming language, uh, MATLAB, Simulink, C Sharp, or whatever, that the simulator is running inside your PC. And then you have the PID controller, in this case, the future PID controller. And this one gets value from the simulated process, like this, using the duct device. And inside the duct device there is a digital to analog converter. In this case we use a USB 6008 from National Instruments. And the output of the simulated process is then sent to the PID controller and then based on that the control signal from the PID controller is sent through the PC and the simulated process using the same duct device. And in this case we use um, the, we need to use uh, the analog to digital converter inside the duct device like this. So in this example we will go through these three steps. So the first step is an ordinary software simulation where we have um, both the mathematical model implemented and in our PC using LabVIEW and we also use the built-in PID controller we have in LabVIEW to control the simulated process. So here in this case everything is implemented in LabVIEW and we don't need any hardware in this case or any duct device. When this is up and running and then we have find some proper PID parameters um, we can use on the simulated process, then we can take or go to the next step where we replace and the PID controller we have used in software with the real hardware, in this case the real PID controller, the real future PID controller, which we will use to simulate the same mathematical model. So then in this case we need to use the duct device. And then when we are able to control the mathematical model using the real hardware, then we can finally 
test the hardware on the real process or the real plant like this. And then in this case, you also don't need any hard device, uh, duct device. Just connect the process directly through the uh, through on uh, the PID controller like this. Here you see another overview of the hardware um, loop simulation and testing. So we have the simulated process implemented in LabVIEW, an output of the process, the temperature. Um, you typically need to scale it to a voltage signal, and then um, it goes to the duct device, the USB 6008 in this case, and then duct device send the value to the PXG5 PID controller and then it calculates a proper control signal um, you may need to scale it and then the scaling is performed inside the PXG5 controller before we can send it to the duct device because the duct device can only handle a signal between 0 and 5 voltage and this Control signal is then sent to the mathematical model and can control it like this. So let's start with the mathematical model we will use in the hardware in the loop simulation. So we, in this example, we will use a small scale process, a so called air eater. But of course, you can use any kind of process. So the air heater is a small scale laboratory process. So the heater, the air is heated by an electronic heater and, su and the supplied power is controlled by an external voltage signal in the range of 0 to 5 voltage. On the temperature sensor, we have a PT100 temperature sensor on the output here and it can be read uh, using, an, using a 1 to 5 voltage signal. And this should uh, uh, correspondent to the temperature range between 20 and 50 degrees Celsius with a linear relationship. So here is an example of the mathematical model we will use. So this is the mathematical model of the air heater. Here we see some more details about the mathematical model of the air heater. So this is the differential equation we have de developed uh, for this air heater system. So the T out is the air temperature at the tube outlet here and U here is the control signal to the heater system we have here and theta T is the time constant in the system and K A is the heater gain um, in the system and theta d is the time delay uh, representing the air transportation in the heater so the air goes from here through the tube and outside here and then we have this time delay and t environment is the environmental temperature in the room and um, if the temperature in the outlet air of the air tube uh, and the control signal to the air heater has been set to zero for a very, very long time, typically some minutes. So we have, if you have no um, control signal, uh, you typically have measure the T environment here on outside. In our simulation, we will use these values as a starting point. Um, theta t 22 seconds, theta d 2 seconds delay, and this uh, this heater gain is 3.5. And the environmental temperature is the room temperature. Uh, in this case, we will use 21.5 degrees Celsius. So here we see an example of the mathematical model implemented in LabVIEW and using the LabVIEW simulation and control module. So this is 
a graphical representation of the differential equation we saw on the previous slide. In this example, we have implemented the model as a block diagram using the continuous differential equation, but also, or in addition, we could have used a, digit, um, a discrete version of the um, model using o Euler or something, but in this case we have chosen to implement the model as a block diagram like we have done in this case. When we have created the model, we should uh, test the model and see if it works properly. In this case, we have implemented the model as a simulation subsystem and we have a while loop which is our system in this case. In this case, there is no PID control. We just manually set a value for the control signal. So we can just set the control signal to one or something in the beginning uh, and simulate a so-called step response of the system like this. In this case, we are also logging the values to a file which we see here, and then we plot the value, the control value in a chart, and then the output of the process, the temperature, is also plotted in a chart like this. In this example, we have implemented the model as a simulation subsystem. This is a good way to st structure your code, uh, and it's very similar to SubVIs, which we are in general use in LabVIEW. So this is the recommended way to do it. And then you can easily reuse your subsystem in different VIs and in other programs. And also the program or the code becomes much more structured. Uh, in order to create a simulation subsystem, you just select file, new, and then choose simulation subsystem. And then you can start creating your model within the simulation subsystem. So we'll show a short demo of how we create a mathematical model inside LabVIEW and, and how we can test it using a step response. So here uh, we see an example of my program where I have implemented the mathematical model as a subsystem uh, like this and then we can open it, open subsystem, right click, open subsystem and then we see Um, our model implemented as a subsystem um, like this. So this is uh, the mathematical model of the air heater. Um, so the differential equation is represent represented with this block diagram. So this model is implemented with the blocks that is part of the W control and simulation module. So you can just right click here, select control and simulation, and then simulation. And then we have all the blocks we need here in these sub palettes. So here we have uh, blocks for gain, summation, multiplication. Um, here we have blocks for integrator. Here we also have a PID controller, here we have the uh, time delay or the transport delay. So all these blocks are available in this palette and the sub palettes you find here. So let's take a look at our mathematic model. Here is the integrator. Here we have the time delay. Here we have used a multiplication block. Also here a multiplication block. Here we have a summation block. So all these blocks together uh, makes the mathematical model. So you just find the blocks in the simulation palette and wire them together like this in order to create the logic to create the mathematical model. So let's go back to our main program. So here in our main program we have a while loop and inside the while loop we use this model 
is SubBI or subsystem. And here we set uh, the model values, transport delay, time, time constant, environmental temperature, an initial value, and a gain value like this. And here we also save or log the val values to the file. In addition, uh, we plot the values inside two charts like this. So let's see our front panel. Let's go to our front panel. Here we see our front panel. So here we have a chart for the control signal and here we have a chart for the uh, simulated temperature and here we can control the control value manually using the slider or set the value here in this, um, this uh, box here. And also we can turn off logging to file. So let's start our program, clicking the run button. And then we have a step response. We set the control signal to one. You see the control signal is steady on one. And then you see the output of the simulated process here. So in this case, it's just an ordinary first order process with time delay. And we see here in the beginning, we have this time delay for two seconds. And then we have this typical step response for a first order system like this. So that's how we implement our mathematical model here and create a simple program to test the process just performing an ordinary step response like this. So now we have implemented the mathematical model in LabVIEW and now we want to find uh, the parameters and the values for the parameters inside the model and in order to do that we need to use some kind of system identification method. So here is our mathematical model and this is the values we have used so far. But they these values may not be the correct values, uh, so we need to find a more exact values for these parameters. Um, there are different ways to do this. We will start with a simple so-called trial and error method, uh, where we create a simple program in LabVIEW, where we run the model in parallel with the real uh, system, the real air heater in this case, um, and then we plot the output, and then we can compare output uh, using a step response and if the output of the simulated model and the real process is equal then the model parameters is okay if they are not equal we need to tune these parameters and try to run uh, this, the, this program once more to see if they are more equal uh, here we see an example how we can implement this in LabVIEW. We, so we use an ordinary while loop and inside the while loop we have our mathematical model that is running in parallel with the real process and the output of the real process and output of the simulated model is plotted in the same plot and then we can easily compare them. Here is the same control signal is going to both the mathematical model and the real process and the, this control signal can be manually set on the front panel. So let's run a demo to see how this can be implemented in LabVIEW. So here you see my program in LabVIEW where I have used the mathematical model we just created and then in parallel we run or get values from the real process using a DAC device and the output is plotted in a chart. So let's start with the mathematical model. We'll just open the subsystem. So this is the model we just created. And here in the real process, in this case I'll use the sub VI, so just just open the sub VI and go to the block diagram. And in this case I'll use the DAC assistance that is part of LabVIEW and the DAC and DOC MX uh, driver. So here 
Well, let's start with this one here in this duck, duck assistant. I read the output of the real air heater process. And this, in this case, this is a signal between one and high voltage. I also used a low pass filter to remove noise from the signal. And then here I have a linear scaling converting the signal 1 to 5 volt uh, to a signal between 20 and 50 degrees Celsius. Here the control signal that we manually set on our ground panel is sent to the air, heat pro air heater process like this. So let's start to see the front panel. So here is the front panel, here is the chart, and here you can uh, configure or set the parameters in our mathematical model, and here we can set the control signal. So let's start to set a step response. So the control signal uh, is one, and then let's start our real process here, and let's start our program to see what's happening. So see here, um, yeah. So here we have the white one is the real temperature, and the red one is the simulated uh, model. So see here the. Environment temperature is a little bit low in inside this room. is It's about 24 degrees. So let's change this one to 24, and let's start the program once more. It seems that the simulated process is much higher than the real process. We could try to reduce the gain. We can set it to two or something. And we can stop it and run it once more. And you see now they are uh, quite equal. We can change the control signal to two, like this. See, the real process and the model follow each other quite well. We can set the control signal back to one. And also, they follow quite well. Of course, they will not be exactly identical because this is a simple mathematical model of the real process. But this seems to be quite good. Let's change the control signal to zero and see what's happening. So they follow quite well. So I guess we are quite satisfied with these uh, results and we will use these values in our simulation later. Let's just stop the program. Another method we can use to find the model parameters is a simple step response method. So we just uh, have a step in the control signal and then we can plot or log uh, the step response from the real system. Um, since our air heater model is an ordinary first order model with gain, time constant, uh, and a time delay like this. So a typical step response for a first order model with time delay is like this. So we have the time delay and then you have the typical response of a first order system and then you can easily find the time constant uh, finding the 63% of the um, steady state value here. So, um, yeah. so let's try to implement this one in uh, LabVIEW. 
So here we see our LabVIEW program. So we run our process and we plot the output in a, in a chart. And you can also choose to plot it to file and, uh, and use uh, Excel or something to, to plot the step response. So let's see uh, the front panel. Here we have the front panel. So we'll plot the temperature from the real process. And here we also plot the control signal. And here we can manually set the control signal. In this case, we just use a separate step response and set the control signal to one. And then we should get this familiar first order response. And based on the plot, we can find the gain and the time delay and the time constant based on the plot. So let's run the program and start the real air heat process. And let's start running the program. Yeah, so now the program is running. We have performed a step response. And when the output reaches this steady state value, we can stop the program and we can use this plot to uh, define the model parameters. So you see we get this typical uh, first order response. Here we, have, here we have that we can find a time delay and then we have this typically step response. So we can just stop it and based on the plot we can find proper values for our model. So next, let's start a simulated control system within LabVIEW. So we have our model implemented in LabVIEW and we have found some uh, good uh, process parameters we can use. And in this example, we will use the built-in PID controller in LabVIEW. And then we'll um, try to control the mathematical model using the built-in PID controller. And then we can find some uh, proper PID parameters. Here is an example how we can do it using an ordinary while loop. And here we have our mathematical model. And here we have used one of the built-in PID controllers in LabVIEW. In LabVIEW you have several built-in PID controllers. This is just one of them. Uh, here is another example where you can use the PID advanced uh, controller. Uh, this one, in, if you want to use this one, uh, this controller um, uses ti and td in uh, minutes but typically we want to set these values in seconds so we need to scale them using this uh, code so let's show how we can do this um, pid control within labio so here i have created a simple program where i used one of the built-in PID controllers in LabVIEW. This is the PID advanced function. And here I have this air heater model. And here I have the model parameters we found um, in the previous part. Here I have this scaling I was talking about. And on the front panel you can set the PID parameters uh, and here you can set the set point. So in this example, the ID is to um, control uh, the simulated process using the built-in PID controller and to find proper PID parameters. So let's just run the program. Here, the set point is 25. So uh, white line is the set point and you see the red line is the simulated temperature so you see you have this typical step response and it uh, goes 
closer and closer to the set point. I can also change the scale to see it a little bit better. Like this. You see, we reach the set point. And then uh, using these PID parameters, um, we are able to control the simulated process using the built in PID controller. You can just stop the program. Now that we have uh, used the mathematical model and the built in PID controller to control the mathematical model, and we have found some proper PID parameters that we can use to control the mathematical model and eventually control the real process. Now it's time to test out the future PID controller. Um, so let's review what we are going to do. Uh, we want to test the controller function with a simulated process before the controller is applied to the real physical process, the air heater process in this case. And if the mathematical model used in the simulator is accurate uh, representation of the real process, you may use it to tune the controller, controller and find the PID parameters using the simulator. So here is our setup. We have the mathematical model in our PC using LabVIEW to implement the model. And then we use a DAC device to send and the output of the mathematical model to the real PID controller and then the control algorithm inside the PID controller is sent back to the mathematical model which is in our PC. Um, before we create the program it's uh, always uh, good to, s to see if the communication between um, LabVIEW and the device we are testing in this case, the PID controller is working properly. So in uh, this simple program, we have connected the PID controller um, with the DAC device. So we can read uh, the process value inside LabVIEW. And then we can, uh, sorry, we can, um, here you can manually set the control sorry, the process vari variable inside LabVIEW, and then we send this value through the DAC device, and you can read it in the PID controller like this. And then the same here, we can, in the PID controller, we can manually set the, um, the control signal, and then we should be able to read that value inside LabVIEW. So here we have set the control signal to 50%, and since it's scaled, to 0 to 5 voltage through the duct device, then in LabVIEW we read 2.5 voltage like this. In this program, and just using two duct assistant, um, makes it easy to test the communication between the real uh, controller and LabVIEW. So when the communication is up and running, we can start creating our hardware in the loop simulator. So here we see the hardware in the loop uh, simulator that we have created in LabVIEW. So here we have the mathematical model of the air heater in the proper model parameters. And then inside this sub VI, um, we read uh, values and send values to the real PID controller using the duct device. Uh, here is something you need to know about the PID um, controller. This PXG5 Fuji PID controller use so-called proportional band. Um, uh, like this, so you need to use this formula to convert the value from proportional band or to the ordinary KP that we use inside LabVIEW in order to compare the results. So let's assume we are using uh, the built-in PID control in LabVIEW and we set KP equal 0 0.8. And then in order to do 
or test the same value inside the PID controller, you need to set the proportional band equal to 125, like this. So we can start uh, to set um, the PID parameters according to the um, uh, values we found in LabVIEW using the built-in PID controller. If these values are not good enough, we could always uh, try to fine-tune the PID parameters using, uh, for instance, the Skogestar method. Um, or we can also use the auto-tuning functionality that is built into the PXG5 uh, PID controller. So let's see how this hardware in loop simulation and testing can be implemented and run inside LabVIEW. So here we have our LabVIEW program, here we have our mathematical model. And the output of the mathematical model, uh, the temperature, is sent to the real PXG5 future PID controller. And the output of the controller, the control signal, is then sent back to the mathematical model. Let's see what's inside this survey. So here we send the process uh, value, the temperature, using the DAC assistant, and we send it to the P PXG5 future controller, and then. The control algorithm in inside the PID controller is calculated and the value is sent back to the mathematical model using another DAC assistant. And then the signal is scaled, so everything is um, in the correct unit. So let's try running this program. So now I have ho hooked up um, the mathematical model that is inside LabVIEW with the real P PXG5 uh, PID controller using the DAC device. So now I can control the mathematical model um, using the future controller. So I can set uh, the set point on the future controller and then I can uh, control the mathematical model inside LabVIEW. So let's just run the program. And you see here, um, this is the simulated process. And it's, it's on my um, controller, I have a set a set point. In this case, I have set the set point about uh, 27 degrees, and you see the process is um, going uh, very close to the set point, like this. So if uh, the controller is not uh, working properly, you can try to adjust the PID uh, parameters on the future controller manually uh, using some um, Skogiska method or, or another method, Siegel Nichols methods, or you can also try the auto tuning functionality that is part of the future controller. So, when you are able to control the mathematical model using the, the future controller and find on some proper PID controller, uh, you are ready uh, to test the future controller on the real process. So now we are uh, ready for the final step in the hardware in a loop uh, simulation and testing. Uh, we want to test the uh, real uh, future PID controller uh, and control the real air heater process. So we are so far able to control a simulated uh, process, our model, mathematical model of the air heater um, process using first a built-in PID controller in LabVIEW, and then 
we have um, used hardware in the loop simulation and testing and he was able to control the mathematical model using the real air heater. So this is the final step to test out if you are able to control the real process using the real hardware, the real uh, PID controller using the same uh, PID settings we used in previous experiments. So we are hooking up um, the real process directly to the future controller using these banana plugs. And this is the settings uh, and the, uh, the configuration we need to do. So we hook up the process value from the real process and wire it into the proper connection to the PID controller. And then based on that, and the controller calculates a proper control value and then we can wire the output from the PID controller, the control value, and wire it into the control input of the real process. So, so if we are uh, able uh, to control the real process using the real air heat, uh, real PID controller using the same uh, PID um, parameters we found in earlier experiments, uh, the hardware in loop uh, simulation and testing was successful. If you want to, you can also hook up the signals uh, so you can monitor the signals with a PC. So the process signal, in addition to send the process signal to the uh, PID controller, we can also send the process signal to the PC using a DAC device so we can monitor the process output on our PC. We can also do the same with the control signal and we can hook up the control signal, send them uh, to the DAC device and then we can monitor both the output signal and the control signal on our PC. That's all for now, so good luck with your hardware in the loop, simulation and testing.